Welcome back to another episode guys. Today I'm with Ted who's never ever really done any spearfishing or free diving in his life and we're gonna go try and get some scallops for a three course dinner. Are you excited Ted? I'm very excited. Mmm. Can you tell? So one tip I heard about scallop diving is if you want to find some scallops it's not a bad thing to find some rocks around there because it means that the ships can't dredge around it so they can only be hand dived so you're more likely to find more scallops if you have a few rocky patches dispersed in between so hopefully I can show you that today and find a few of these tasty tasty mollusks. I don't think I know too many people that go for a, a shore dive with Doc Martens on mate. Well I just uh... <laughs> Only a 7mm wetsuit this time. This is the thinnest wetsuit I've worn in about six months. This is going to feel very liberating. Can't wait. Dive our dog stop afloat. This thing is absolutely awesome. It's like a little surfboard. You can pump it up through here. There's a valve on there with a bike pump and ah, super cool float. Really stable. Doesn't need a counterweight for the flag because it's Nice and flat, really visible, and it planes really well behind big halibut, as you can see in this video here. If you haven't seen, I mean, who hasn't seen that video? Everybody's seen that video. Look at this thing! Oh. Oh, I told Ted to bring a mask, and he has gone full Barry Paxman style on this. Oh, have a go with the size of this thing. <laughs> oh well, it'll do. I often forget that getting into a spearfishing wetsuit for someone that has never done it before can be a pretty intimidating prospect. <laughs> yeah, so that's your weight vest. So if you get into any trouble at all, you just... And then, Pop it like it's hot. Yeah, and just get out of it, basically. Yeah. All right. It looks like it's fogging up already. Yeah. Hold on. Take two. Oh, look at that. There's... Salt <laughs> water in your lenses is not good, though. Contact lenses. Does it look like it's fogging up as much as it was? Look at that mask. That is just the funniest thing I've seen all day. <laughs> I quite like it. <laughs> all right, um, get your gloves on, fins, and let's rock. You feel it all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry not to break my ankle. Right. So you can float a little bit because you got your you got a suit. Unfortunately for Ted, my spare set of fins have a foot pocket that's designed for a 1.5mm sock. Consequently, they were a little tight on his foot. When diving for scallops, I like to anchor my float with my drop weight. I then swim around the float in concentric circles, trying to make sure that I don't cover the same area twice. I give Ted a quick demonstration on how to dive from the surface, and I also want to check out the bottom. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is a scallop. Ted had an absolute red hot go at diving, but unfortunately that massive barley mask of his kept filling up with water every time he went to equalize by pinching his nose. So it was up to me to go get the rest of dinner. You see some water? I can see it full of water. You can see here that scallops don't mind inhabiting the same areas as weed or kelp. I find it much easier to spot the scallops when I'm right down on the bottom. After a bit of looking, you eventually find a decent patch and you can pick up a few at a time. Certainly speeds the process up a bit for dinner. Sometimes the scallops can be a little tricky to spot, but I've often found that they form a little depression of sand around them from opening and closing as they filter the water. Well, I was grabbing a scallop, I saw this place just sitting there, so I got my knife out. 
let's go with another shank up rod like I did in Durbo up the other day. This night fishing's turning into a bit of a thing. Shank him up, mate. If you find yourself some distance from the flow and you've got a few scallops, I find tucking them up under the front and back of my wetsuit jacket a great spot to store them until I can get back to the float and unload the bounty. Ted lost a snorkel. Yeah. In traditional newbie fashion, you have to lose something. Got a quite a nice bag of scallops. We'll have some very, very happy women on our hands tomorrow. And now, we're gonna swim in. Although Ted's got foot pockets are a little bit too small for it, so he can't feel his feet, so he might not be doing that much swimming. But overall, very positive. <coughs> Frozen feet from too small of foot pockets, lost a snorkel, didn't lose a GoPro, that's important. Got some scallops, got a place as well. Look at that thing. This knife fishing's becoming a bit of a well, they know it's just happened twice, so I don't know what that means, but it's happened. We're gonna have some very, very happy ladies on our hands, I suspect. Oh, that's the scallop collecting part. Get out of these wetsuits. That'll be funny watching him get out of this wetsuit. So first tip, take off your weight vest as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> Second tip. Hood on. You have to have your hood on. Hood on? On, otherwise it strangles you around the neck. Ah. Uh... That's a tip for young young players there. Put your hood on, it makes it way easier to get your suit off. I also forget that getting out of the wetsuit can be just as intimidating as getting into the wetsuit. Sunday afternoon has arrived, I'm back here in the kitchen. I'm going to be cooking these scallops three different ways tonight. And the first step to cooking any of those dishes is to get the scallop meat out of the shell. And I'll show you how to shuck this scallop very quickly, very easily, nothing to be afraid of, super simple. Shucking a scallop is really quite easy. You just take the knife in under here, and then remove it from the top flat part of the shell. As you can see here, there's a flat side and a round side. You wanna go up the flat side, it'll pop open, a few little cuts, and then you can remove the meat and the roe in one go. So if you get it up under here, from the top, opens up, there's the top part, you can get rid of that. Now you've got this part of the scallop left, a cut down there, and then a little bit under there, and you can Pull it out and take off these scrappy bits here. After a little bit of a rinse, there's your clean scallop with the row attached. Apparently, you're not supposed to deep fry the row because it explodes, so I will be uh, removing that for the ones that I deep fry for the first course. Here's our pile of tasty deliciousness. Oh, can't wait to cook all this. Are you excited? I'm super pumped to get stuck into our scallops. Shucking's all done, got all the scallop meat out, got some of the roe for the spaghetti later on. First course, we're going to use these smaller scallops and crumb them with panko crumbs. That involves dipping flour, egg, crumbs, deep fried in oil with a koopy lime mayo. Does it make it all worthwhile after all that time in the water, Ted? Mm -hmm. The next course is really simple. Scallop meat into the shell, butter, garlic, bit of parsley on top, that's it. Nothing like scallops and champagne. Yeah. Salud. That's in butter. Oh, I think they're quite hot, those shells. Start going down the hatch. Not too bad. Mm. <laughs> Bit hot? <laughs> Delicious. It was worth the cold feet for the hot mouth. Next course on for tonight is a spaghetti with scallop pasta dish. 
Giuliano gave me this dish. We're using the roe and some chopped up scallops with garlic, olive oil, and chili. Bring that to heat. Once the garlic turns yellow, we'll bang in the scallops. At the moment, I've got the spaghetti on. Hoping to cook this al dente and not stuff it up. Mix that all together once it's all done. A bit of the juice from the spaghetti into the mix just to keep it a bit moist. Mix through some parsley that Hannah has previously chopped up here. Fingers crossed, it tastes as good as everything else. Here we go. Ooh. Looks Thank all right. You. It's all right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm. Grazie Giuliano. There's been a unanimous decision to skip the place, the right place at the wrong time for the place. Figure that one out. Gonna enjoy this Hungarian dessert wine and the pie that Ted and Victoria made. If you want a good night out, food, friends, family, and a little bit of wine tends to help. Well, look, they didn't turn out exactly how I imagined they would. Oh, it was probably a little bit hot. Yeah. Whoops. Is it even cooked in the middle? Not quite. <laughs> Fine. I can still eat it. Yeah? It's nice. <laughs> well, this is the worst, the worst I've ever done on cooking. Holy crap, we're gonna have to redo this segment.